<laughs> Stegosaurus says hello and so do I. I am Monkey Puzzle and welcome to episode number 10 of playing Resident Rise 3 here under my dinosaur in our little series Rise of the Resident Monkeys. Welcome back, welcome back. So yeah, last I left you, I was, I made this little dinosaur here. Well, he was more little at the time. Now he's a great big dinosaur. And if we look at him, uh, let me see, where did I put my Dinopedia? Right here. If we look at him with the Dinopedia, he is now 17 days old. He's got 33 hearts and he's a little bit hungry, but not too bad. He has been feeding himself uh, from these ferns that have been spreading all over and I learned what him being the order of the stick means If I click on him, he'll stay or he'll follow like that just right clicking on him So I now have a giant dinosaur Doing my bidding of course. It's a little annoying follow means he <laughs> basically swallows me up wherever I go he just like covers me. <laughs> I am surrounded by Stegosaurus. But I can also let him free move, which I'll do. Or maybe he should just hang out. Yeah, you just stay. So he's really fun. And we got to start some more dinosaurs today. Uh, but we got to do a bunch of other stuff too. I've got kind of a free form episode planned today. I'm just going to do a bunch of things with you all over here. Dodos are no longer extinct anymore. <laughs> I started some more and and that's the chocobo sound and the other sounds are all the uh, the dodo sounds. And I put them in here with the chocobos so that they wouldn't drown themselves this time. And then I put in this vacuum chest uh, attached to a regular chest and it picks up dodo eggs. They lay them just like chickens do. And I've collected quite a few and started some of these with them. Don't drown in the sand, Dodo. That would be a Dodo thing to do. Don't do it. Anyway, so yeah, we have two formerly extinct species that no longer are, so that's a lot of fun. I want to start some more too. Oh, here's the, the rare and snaring Plesiosaurus the Drainer. <laughs> He's a Weber exhaust berserk. <laughs> yeah, see how berserk he is? He just sits there. Anyway, I'd like to start some of these today. That would be really fun. In fact, why don't we just go ahead and do that now? And so that's happening while we do some other things. So in here, let me see, I've got some Plesiosaur DNA. Let's throw that in. And I'm going to need a bucket of milk as well to get that going. And I have analyzed a whole bunch of fossils. And in here, I probably have every possible dinosaur and mammal possible. Uh, maybe we should start a couple mammoths this time <laughs> as well. Oh, Dodo, let's take the Dodo out and put the mammoth in. And then uh, let me see if I got some milk. And then I did a bunch of work on my ME system. I should show you that. For some reason, it doesn't automatically go up there when I click, but do I have any milk? I do. Look at that. I am set on milk. Let's get four of them and throw them in there. So here, if we put that in there, I got four plesiosaur. We're going to only start two today, um, but that should be enough to start two plesiosaurs. And then the mammoth, same thing. Let's throw the milk in there and take that out and put another milk in there. And so we'll come back to that. We have to be a little careful because if this doesn't work out, once in a while you get a failure Saurus <laughs> and they can run around and cause havoc. I don't think they'll damage blocks. I hope not because everything I own is in these drives right now, these storage cells. So this is now consolidated. And then I've got some dense cable going to the rest of the base. So let's go uh, check that out. We can just go upstairs like this. Yeah, so over here where I used to have my chest full of goodies, now I just have crafting terminals like this and like this. And this is um, some cabling. I can't see it that way, but we can click on it. It's going upstairs right there. So we'll check that out in a second. And I've taken a page from 
cat dog pig ducks uh, clipboard, <laughs> literally. Um, and I've started a to-do list on a clipboard. I can knock this off the wall and I still have all of it on here so I can uh, add and subtract and stuff like this. So this is just a beginner list of stuff I want to do. So I've updated the pack. I did that today. So we're now on, let me go check to make sure I get the number straight. All right, I went and checked and it is 3.2.6.2. So the latest version of Resident Rise 3, I'll put a new share code in the uh, description if you want to play the same pack as us or you want to at least check out the mod list, which is too long to list because it's 200 and some odd mods. Now I heard a crash and zombie sounds downstairs. So looks like, yes, somewhere around here, we must have a Failiosaurus. And he definitely caused some damage. He broke his, uh, oh, there he is, making his little slime trail. <laughs> they make zombie sounds. Apparently they hit with a heart of damage. And yes, this is my little Failiosaurus. Isn't he cute? Right. <laughs> and then we have all this slime trail to clean up as well. Do I get anything from it? Oh, I get some slime. That's not so bad. I could actually use them to farm. Uh, oh, hey, <laughs> farm slime balls. Uh, I'm going to clean up a little bit. <laughs> I'll be right back. All right, I got that cleaned up. That wasn't so bad. And you can actually get all those slime balls out of it. So that was pretty cool. Uh, and we did get a plesiosaur egg, so we have that. Let's let another one try, and we'll save that for the end of the episode as a little treat. <laughs> Still working on our mammoths. I'm doing two, because apparently dinosaurs, when you have two, they'll breed, which would actually be a good reason to do another stegosaurus as well. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let me just put this stuff down here for now. And uh, we will get to it. And uh, I can put away my stick as well. And my buckets. All right. So more things to show you. Uh, let me see. Up here. Oh, yeah. Let's finish with our clipboard. So, yeah. This is just a quick uh, jotting down of stuff to do. Um, today, let's see. We can make some Tinker's Hearts. We could explore the new nether. Let's do this first. And then I'll explain this. And one thing I want to show you just while I'm thinking of it is up here in the new base HQ up here, I've got it fully hooked up with the ME going all the way up so we can craft and we can check out our stuff, see what we have the most of and everything. And then also up here is power. And both of these come up, uh, these two columns right here. So you can see I've got facades going all the way up in that column and then in this one this is microblocks covering up some uh, dense me cable and somewhere around here i just lost my microblock oh well oh there it is and then yeah you can't directly attach terminals to the dense cables so i just put them on the floor like that so they wouldn't stick out but yeah i can access everything from right here as well so yeah, let's make some more um, Tinker's Hearts. We can do that from anywhere. Some more, I say, but I haven't made any yet. So let's check it out. Um, and this can help keep me from dying. I've also, th I've got three of these. I found that the, um, the last stand on, it's on my jetpack. I thought it was on my jetpack. Where is my last stand? Okay, I've got last stand on my leggings for sure. I thought I had it on both my jetpacks, um, but maybe I don't. Uh, let me put that one back. I have a full jetpack anyway. Okay, that one has it. Huh. Anyway, I think that has saved my life a few times. And really what I'm searching for here is canister. So I want to make the heart canister. Let me just put these back in. And do I have yellow hearts? Let me just search heart. No, I don't. I just have the three red. So we can just make those. And hopefully I've got the necrotic bones, I should. So to make this, uh, we need all that. Let's go ahead and make those. So we need three of those, that's no biggie. And then we also need three of these. 
That's a bit more of a biggie, but we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, anybody knows what happens when you eat these? They must be like super notch apples or something like that. I haven't tried it yet. So can we go ahead and do this? We can. And we'll get three of those. So now if I put those uh, over here, I should get three more hearts right here. So that'll help me to be just a little bit tougher because there are lots of tough mobs <laughs> in this thing uh, that could kill me. So I'm going to be careful. Yeah, with the uh, there's so many ways I've made myself to get around here, <laughs> sometimes when I'm recording, I still get a little confused. Uh, with the update, we have reset the nether. We deleted the old nether because it was bereft of the ores it was supposed to have. It was supposed to have Ardite and Cobalt at the very least, and it didn't have either of those. So we were not able to advance with our uh, Iguana Tweaks. And Cat Dog Pig Duck puts this little fence around things. I guess I could have gone through the gate to contain the nasty pigmen, I guess. Or keep things from going in, maybe. Uh, that's probably the thing. Um, so we got exactly the same nether formation as before, because it's the same seed. Um, you can see that this is brand new, and all the places we tunneled through uh, are intact. Except I started this tunnel here. But now we have nether ores as well, which I had avoided before, because, I don't know, some seemed a little cheaty to me, but... Uh, I was wondering if that was what was keeping us from having the Ardite and Cobalt. And plus it made the share co code more difficult to use because you had to go and remove it. It, was one of the, it wasn't one of the optional mods. It was just part of the core mods. Anyway, so it's in here now. I'm going to live with it and, and live with it well. I've actually found a bunch of diamond ore down here already. And I've learned a lot from these two. I've never used nether ores. This was some diamond ore that I was mining and it went hiss and it exploded. Uh, some of these will do that when you're mining them. That one didn't. And that was my silk tuck touch pick. But apparently even with the fortune pick, uh oh, I've made them mad. Uh, that's the other thing that cat dog informed me of is sometimes the uh, pigmen <laughs> will get mad <laughs> when you do this. So sorry, pigmen, I'll put that back. And then we're still covered by the lava lake that we were before, but Cat Dog Pig Duck bravely or foolishly tunneled up straight up through the lava lake. Almost killed me <laughs> with the lava that flowed down. Oh, there are these guys. Woo! They're all mad. Okay, yeah, you guys go down there and wait for me. <laughs> so he managed to just lose three hearts and do this, which was pretty good. And now we have a much more, whoop, that didn't catch, uh, much more direct way uh, to get up here. So appreciate that. I took some blood and extended a little bit with some obsidian. And isn't this great? It comes up, turns out the nether fortress we were using was right above our portal. So now we have really direct access and all our blaze spawners are in exactly the same place as they were before. Whoa! <laughs> Where are ya? Let me hover. I gotta take care of that guy. Is he done messing with me? I hear, oh, I guess he is now. <laughs> oh, there you are. So yeah, I just wanted to show you guys this real quick. So, I still can't uh, mine Cobalt because um, I haven't updated the pick yet, but I have mined a bunch of Ardite. Here's some dense Ardite. That's pretty cool. And yeah, I'm a little slow because I'm flying. Um, but now, yeah, now we can advance. I can replace this head with an Ardite head. And then I'll be able to go to Cobalt. And then we'll have Manulin. So we'll be all the way advanced. And there's plenty of Cobalt. And there's also plenty of other ones. That blue stuff there is uh whoa god it's dangerous around here <laughs> that's lapis ore all the overworld ores are found here and this is also going to be a great source for draconium which uh, is going to be hard to find in the overworld because i pre-gened the pretty big radius in the overworld just so that when we were going around we wouldn't be loading new chunks um back when we started the pack and Draconium only forms in newly spawned chunks. Um, it's pretty rare at that. 
So now these are all new chunks and there will be draconium here. I'm actually thinking about making a digital miner just to find that stuff in here so we can get into uh, dra draconic evolution. And I'm mostly into it for the gigantic power storage. I think that would be pretty cool. Anyway, uh, see, let's get back here <laughs> and look at our list of things that I could do. Oh, these guys still mad? Oh no, it's this situation again, where it put me down in the bottom of this thing. Ah, uh, that's annoying. So I'm just gonna get my way back up again, and I'll meet you at the top. Actually, let me deactivate this one real quick, too. That's drag. Yeah, I was having that problem before. Something to do with Cat Dog, Pig Duck, and I both having bases in separate places and sharing the same uh, nether destination. Anyway, hopefully I'll get that figured out. I think when he makes um, a more precise portal for himself, that'll stop happening for me. And next time I go down there, I'll probably be in a flooded cave. <laughs> All right, so over here, Let's go take a look at our clipboard again. This is a great way for me to keep track of what I want to do and also for you guys to see what's coming up and see what you think. And we can edit this list as we go. So I did that. We did that. Uh, we could do that real quick. Uh, it's not very interesting for you guys, but I thought I should do it um, on camera and just a quick look so you guys see so that Starting bees and trees involves making forestry machines. I want to make an ender quarry post haste because I want to start actually quarrying the nether. More dinosaurs. We'll do that at the end of this episode. And I should probably devote the whole episode to this, to starting ancient warfare. I want to use these guys for some of my basic farms, like wheat farms and stuff like that. Just got to get going in Thomcraft. Got to get going in Batania. I'm a little intimidated by Batania at this point because there's so much stuff in it. It's just incredible, but we're going to jump into it. Um, enhanced portals and Spectre Key. I saw a neat trick with that from Nonsanity that I want to uh, I want to take a cue from before we do the Ender Compass and find the end because we've got hardcore Ender expansion right now, so it's going to be no joke. But I've heard that also the majority of the Draconium is findable in the end. So let me see, down here, let me put my little list back for the moment. And uh, I, one other thing I did too, is I changed out the dimo, diamond blocks for resonant ender in here, which makes this thing run a little bit better. It went up into the 400s right now, it's lowering itself because it's full. And Kazorith remind me, reminded me that I could do that in the smeltery. So I went ahead and I made Resonant Ender in the smeltery and just pumped it out. Um, but I found that when you tried to do energized or destabilized redstone, it didn't work out quite, quite right. So I went ahead and I started some uh, thermal expansion stuff over here, some of the machines. And I actually made them with the third tier of, I don't know where you see it. I made them with the third tier of, of the machine core. Uh, so yeah, they're reinforced, so this makes them a little bit better than they would be otherwise. So yeah, I want to make a, use an Ender IO farming station for this, because every time I'm here, I feel like I need to do this. <laughs> I probably don't need this much XP right now at this point, but it's good to have, and it's just, I compulsively need to harvest it all the time. You can see <laughs> what I mean. And so it'll just be one less thing for me to do. And I have these extra uh, essence berries here. So let's go ahead and see what it takes to make a farming station, a fajarming station, right here. And they have reskinned Ender IO as well. And that's no big deal. That's no big deal. The tricky thing was the Z Logic controller. So I need to make a slice and spice, and I need to make some solar solarium. So that's uh, gold plus soul sand. So that's easy enough. Let's get some gold. Uh, we don't need a lot for it. Uh, let's just clear that. Let's just do probably don't eight's probably too much and some soul sand. So just grab eight of those 
And while we're doing this other part, we'll just throw that into the alloy smelter. And then we need to make the slice and splice this thing right here. So, oh, we're going to need some of that stuff for it. So we can do that. All right, it all went in. I keep forgetting. I replaced my, yeah, I replaced my obsidian chest with an ender chest. But out of habit, I keep looking there for the products of things. So let's, let me try that again. And there. And I'm just going to make these things real quick. All right, there it is. There is our slice and splice. And I don't know where I want to put this. I know I've got power on this wall for now. Uh, all over the place. So I'm just going to throw it there for the moment. And then let's go get the things we need for it. All right, I should have everything now and I just throw it all in there. And it will now make us the controller. So I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna throw it in the rest of the recipe for the farming station. I think this is the last thing I need. I need a couple of these pulsating crystals. So now if I try to make the farming station, I hopefully should be good to go. And what am I missing? I thought I just made some of those. Oh, I made the iron bars for it, but I didn't make them. Okay, now we're good to go. <laughs> the farming station. So I'm gonna set it up over here. I'm gonna empty this area out and I'm gonna bring some power over here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that and I'll show you the results. It's a quick update because this part is gonna get covered up and I won't be able to show you, but I've just opened up this area to a nine by nine. So the thing in the middle with four extending on each side, uh, cause I think that's their limit, but I'm not sure I could, I could probably upgrade it, but that's enough for this anyway. But there was power already coming over to the auto disenchanter with this flex duct here. So I went ahead and I extended the flex duct to over here and what I have learned is, let me see, this is gonna be right here, the farming station is gonna be right above here. Why don't we just go ahead and place it uh, right there. So I don't think it matters which way I stand, but there it is. So we can go ahead and take this. Now, I wanna put two things coming from the bottom. So I'm gonna use the Ender IO conduit. I want power going to it and I want items coming out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the item conduit and I'm gonna send stuff to an ender chest I've made right here. So we're just gonna insert there and then from up here with that, we're gonna extract. So that was all the products. And then I've learned that these uh, energy conduits can hook directly to the flux duct. So we should have power and then we also have the ability to remove items from it. So that's cool. Uh, let's go ahead and just cover this back up now. And hopefully we should be good to go. I just wanted to show you that little part. So I'm gonna finish the rest, I'll be right back. So that should be pretty much it. I've placed out all the essence berry bushes I have for now. I've got room for expansion for more. On this chest on top, I filled full of peridot hose, or I could put more. Um, I just manually fill this once in a while. It's, it's still something to do, but not nearly as much as harvesting all these. And then in here, I put some seeds just so it would stop telling me that it need, has no seeds. <laughs> but I think that's good to go. It's got power. It can get rid of the essence berries as it forms them. I'll see once these things grow but that is something automated. So that's very cool. We can go over here now and go back. And now I can say I've done oop, that. I got to right click. Okay, so uh, real quick, let me see. Let me start bees and trees <laughs> and then we'll make a dinosaur and then we'll be done. I'm not sure how much time I've spent, probably too long already. But just let's look at princesses. I've been gathering, and a lot of what I've gathered is ignoble stock. So I don't want that. I want the pristine stock. The one, ignoble stock means that they will eventually die out, and I don't want that. I want them to last a long time. So with bees, uh, forestry bees, 
the easiest way to start is with a forest princess and meadows princess. And then if we look at the drones, we have some forest drones and and we have the meadows there we go the meadows drones so and those don't matter as far as uh, ignoble or pristine and then i would need to make seed oil and do that whole deal but in my explorations i found some apiaries already and we only have three princesses so far so we'll only need three of these for the moment but i'm just going to get this started so that I will be able to show you next episode. Now, I don't know what my climate is here. If we press F3, I'm in a shield. And I don't know what that means as far as warmth and humidity and such. But let's just throw these down somewhere, say here, where I can just start playing with them. And then if we throw in a forest princess and Let's make some more of these first before we go ahead and crossbreed them. So I'm going to throw in what I got already and just make sure that I get a good number of drones of these because then I'll be able to turn the rocky princesses into these. Let me make it daytime and then uh, we will check out. I could have just used my sleeping bag, I guess, but I have this nice purple bed up here and we still get all this chat spam when we start up Minecraft, but that's all right. As long as it keeps working. I have gotten some instances where my game freezes my whole computer, and I don't know what that's about. That's why I start uh, and stop the recording a lot, but this looks good. Look at this, they're working. So that's great. Uh, no power required. Uh, temperature is normal, normal, so the shield works out fine. And I should put some frames in here, which I can't make yet because I need to make the seed oil. And to do that, I need a bunch of seeds. And so maybe next episode, we'll start Ancient Warfare. Stay there. <laughs> we'll start Ancient Warfare uh, where we can um, use, the, use the NPCs to do our farming. So I don't have time now to wait for this to keep going. But what I'm going to do, basically, and I can describe it in better detail next time, after I get some more pristine drones for each of these things, I'm going to start crossing them. I'm going to cross the meadows and the forest and breed my way up to common and then cultivated. And that will be the basis of our breeding. And in the meantime, I should make things like a bealizer. And I guess I can make frames... Right now, actually, they just won't be, um, they won't be very good. <laughs> they won't last long. And now we should be good to make some untreated frames. So if I throw those in, I'll just get more bee products. And let me see, I need nine of them. I'll just use some bamboo, that's all right. And run over here past my dangerous dinosaur. And we'll put those in there and there. And there, and we'll just get more products, and we need to build those up anyway, because we'll need those later. And I should start getting a bunch of flowers around here, too. And I should probably also throw some trees around here, but I won't start that yet. This is just the basics, base, base, basics of just getting these guys going. So that's something. We've officially started bee breeding. I don't, didn't get any kind of fireworks for that, but it's probably because we didn't make these. So let's finish up uh, with our dinosaurs and see what we got over here how things worked out we got another plesiosaur that pleases me and we have a mammoth embryo that's right we got to do it that way oh yeah yeah so the mammoth embryo do we have another mammoth uh we don't so let's get one more mammoth going because i thought i got had more than one started but maybe not in that disaster so we'll get another one going, because that way uh, we'll be able to breathe them. But let me see, if I go up here, and this is get out of here this way. And there's that. So for the mammoth, woo, okay, take off. We got to go over here. I think a cow will work. Uh, how are you getting out? Tricky. <laughs> yeah, you think you're sneaky. 
is we got to go up to like a sheep or a pig or a cow and we inject them with the mammoth embryo. I wonder if there's any way to keep track of this one. Nope. So <laughs> it's going to get lost in the crowd and we're losing some of the world there. But I just have to keep coming back and checking on it. And eventually it should give birth to a little baby mammoth. So that's very cool. And then back over here, plesiosaurs are water creatures. So I'm just going to go maybe over here. I got to hang out near it. Do I got some Minecraft torches? I do. So let's just put our plesiosaur down. And it needs to go between some torches to stay warm. And then I need to hang out by it because um, that will tame it automatically. And I think I had a second plesiosaur egg. Let me grab that real quick. So let me put that down here. And I'm pretty sure if I'm just near them when they hatch, it will be okay. So this one's going to be a little behind the other. But uh, warning, cultivating failed. Uh, let me get my... Dinopedia out. Oh, I must have a Phalosaurus back at the base. That's what it is. And here's my Dinopedia. Let's check it out. So, warm, 14 out of 100, 66 out of 100, and it's moving pretty rapidly. So, I'm not going to worry about the Phalosaur right now. I'll just get a bunch of slime. I'm going to hang out here until this is ready, and then I'll be right back. All right, we're in the final countdown. So there it is. Woohoo! All right, we got a little plesiosaur and he's hatched. That's very cool. So he's able to hunt his own fish, apparently. If I get some essence of chicken, I can make him grow up. But apparently, this thing uh, gives him commands. So is he following me right now? I think he is. Are you my little plesiosaur? Yeah, what does the Dinopedia say? It definitely says I'm his owner. We shouldn't go too far, because we got to be near this one when it hatches. But apparently, these conches um, tell it what to do. Oh no, I had another failure over there. So, where'd he go? Uh, this makes him stay. And, also uh, he's staying. I don't think he can drown. And if you put it in here, you get a new command. So now it's saying he follows me. Um, okay, he's not there. Oh, I'm stuck here for a minute because we are at 97, 98. We're going to have a pair of plesiosaurs. And <laughs> he jumps straight in the water as well. So I'm going to do the follow thing again. And that works for him. I'm not sure where the other one went. Let me go find it real quick. Look at that. He's dropping fish. That's cool. So put him in, a, in just a little tank of water and he'll be kind of like a fish farm. But I already have that with the fish trap. I, I don't know what has happened to the other one. <laughs> and now I don't know where that one is either. All right. Well, I will locate my missing plesiosaurs in a minute. If I right click on the conch, it still says follow. Oh, there's that one. Very cool. But he's not actually following me. Do I have to be pointing at him to do it? Uh, yeah, I guess so. All right, and let's just come over here. And yes, look, <laughs> it's disaster again. We have two failosaurs. <laughs> anyway, they're coming after me to get me. And uh, I just saw my plesiosaur again. But I think that's enough for today, y'all. Uh, hopefully you have fun with me. <laughs> Doing our plesiosaurs and everybody else. Where is he? I keep seeing a little flash of him. Oh, he's in there. Hello. <laughs> so thank you for watching until the end. 
tell me what you think about my to-do list and what you'd like to add to it or subtract from it and so on. So this is Monkey Puzzle, your host, and I'm signing out <laughs> with my failures. Bye-bye. <laughs>